So I want to talk today about a disease that plenty of NCLEX takers don't really focus much on. And I have spoken to plenty of uh, recent NCLEX test takers and asked them a few questions. And plenty have told me that they were surprised to see this specific disease in their exam, and that is Guillain-Barre syndrome. Now, what is Guillain-Barre syndrome? Basically, it's a disorder that occurs when the body's immune system, right, our immune system mistakenly attacks part of our nervous system. And basically, what this does is it leads to nerve inflammation and in turn causes muscle weakness, which is a major symptom of this disease. Now, one of the most important things to know for the NCLEX is that the patient can also have what we call ascending paralysis and the term is pretty much self-explanatory in which it's basically weakness beginning in the feet and hands and then it goes up towards the trunk and this is one of the most typical symptoms for these patients now patients generally would also notice weakness in their legs right and it's it's manifested as what we call rubbery legs okay and what rubbery legs is basically legs that tend to buckle with or without num numbness or tingling. Now, as this weakness kind of progress upwards towards the body, usually over a period of hours and even days, the arms and, and the patient's facial muscles also starts to become affected. Now, as the nurse, it's a big priority for us to, to be aware that this disease can become quite severe and when that happens, the patient can the patient can have actually a loss of autonomic function, which is very common, and it can manifest as what we call fluctuations, right? Very wide fluctuations in the blood pressure, and the patient can also have orthostatic hypotension, which is a fall in blood pressure when the patient is standing. And remember, this can lead to an increased risk of injury or collapse, right? And also, another priority that we need to know when this disease can become severe is that the patient can also have even sinus tachycardia which as we all know is a cardiac arrhythmia so how do we diagnose these patients now the diagnosis is usually made by what we call nerve conduction studies and the term that would be used in the NCLEX is electromyography or EMG and basically what it is is it's basically just a test that checks the health of the muscles and the nerves that controls those specific muscles and remember this is a very common diagnostic test so it's important it's important for us to know this information for the NCLEX and it's basically used to tell the difference between muscle weakness caused by maybe an injury of a nerve attached to a muscle or if the weakness is due to a neurological disorder such as the Guillain-Barre syndrome now until today there is no known cure for Guillain-Barre syndrome However, there are therapies, what we call therapeutic procedures, that can help lessen the severity of the illness and hopefully accelerates the recovery of our patients. Now, there can be several number of ways to treat the complications of this disease, but the two most common, two most common therapeutic procedures that you really need to know for your NCLEX exam would include plasma exchange, and the term that will be used in the NCLEX is plasmapheresis, right? So it's plasmapheresis, and the other therapeutic treatment is high-dose immunoglobin therapy. Okay, now basically plasma exchange, or what we call plasmapheresis, is, is a method in which whole blood is removed from the body, and then it would be processed so that the red and the white blood cells are being separated from the plasma, or what we call liquid portion of the blood. Now, the blood cells would then be returned to the patient without the plasma, which the body will eventually quickly replace. Now, how this works is that it helps reduce the severity and the duration of the, the Guillain-Barre episodes because what plasmapheresis eventually does is it removes antibodies and other immune cell-derived factors that can contribute to the nerve damage in our patients. Okay. Now, in these patients, we need to monitor for possible complications. And the two possible complications could be hypovolemia and hypokalemia post-procedure in our patient. Now, I will go over more important NCLEX topics and contents that you need to know for your NCLEX exam at the blog at allnursingnotes.com. Again, that's allnursingnotes.com. 
Now, thank you so much for watching, and I really do appreciate the nice comments from, from you guys from the bottom of my heart. And also, I wish you the best of luck in your NCLEX exam. I know you will all do great. Thank you, and God bless.